Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macroeconomics video uh, where we're going to be analyzing and significantly evaluating import tariffs. This is a 2019 update video. Quick reminder, tariffs, import tariffs, of course, are taxes on imports. Uh, they're paid by the importer, although oftentimes the tariff might be passed on to the consumer of the final product. Crucial point, tariffs typically apply almost exclusively to goods, tangible things like steel and copper and cars and LCD screens. They typically don't apply to services. And obviously a huge amount of uh, tariff economics in the news at the moment, not least the persistent ongoing trade war between China and the United States. Another big issue at the moment, of course, is the tariffs that the UK may face if they leave the European Union in a no-deal Brexit. Uh, the European Union has tariffs, for example, 10% on cars, and this chart shows EU tariffs on agricultural products. Take a look at some of them, they're very high, nearly 45% on dairy products, for example, uh, touching 30% on sugars and confectionery. Uh, nearly nearly 15-20% on cereals and preparations. So UK producers trying to export into the European Union without a deal might find their ag agricultural produce subject to some quite significant tariffs in the weeks and months ahead. Of course, these tariffs create both winners and losers. There's lots of interesting economics you can talk about. The tariff diagram is one of those macroeconomic diagrams that become so important in any economics essay. A um, couple of points here. One is I think it's a good idea to draw demand and supply curves to the y-axis because this allows you to include some welfare consequences into your analysis diagram. And as soon as you're starting to talk about welfare, pardon me, welfare, equity, efficiency, all those kind of things, you're going to be getting the higher levels of analysis marks. Second little exam hint is to make your tariff diagram industry specific. Don't just draw a generic diagram. In this case, we're looking at a possible tax on steel coming into a market. Could be copper, could be cars, could be foodstuffs, but make your tariff diagram specific that allows you to focus your analysis. In this situation here, the world supply of steel is much cheaper than the domestic price, and that leads to a high level of imports. Of course, the, the tariff isn't designed to eliminate imports. It's, it's designed to minimise or control imports rather than completely eradicate them. So here's an example of a tariff on steel. The red line here shows the world supply price plus the tariff. So the tariff is the vertical shift in, in that curve. As a result of the tariff, the price at which steel is traded goes up. And that leads to expenditure switching effects. Demand for steel goes down. Uh, domestic supply expands and the quantity of imports of steel falls to Q5, Q4. Uh, then you build your analysis. Uh, you can show the tax revenue from an import tariff. It's the tariff per unit multiplied by the quantity or volume of imports. And that's shown by the orange, orange shaded area in our diagram. And if you really want to go to town on your analysis, and get the highest marks for analysis, which I know many of you do, You'd also think about the welfare consequences. Here was consumer surplus after the tariff. Originally, it was much higher. So typically, tariffs increase prices for consumers. They have to pay more, and that leads to a fall in real incomes and, and a contraction of demand. And again, to go further, tariffs typically cause a deadweight loss of welfare. Some of the tariff uh, generates extra producer surplus for domestic suppliers. Uh, some of it goes in tax revenue to the government but there's a deadweight loss of welfare shown there by the blue shaded areas. So typically tariffs lead to other things being the same, a deadweight loss of welfare. Um, tariff diagrams are really important, in getting those top analysis marks. And you can just simply reverse the diagram if you want to talk about trade liberalization. What I wanted to do in this video is just basically take you through some really key evaluation points. These are the sort of things that you might want to bring into your critical evaluation in any kind of question on import protectionism, but in particular, evaluating, examining, assessing the impact of an import tariff. As always, use the context that's provided. It could be a data response question or a short stimulus. But here are some generic evaluation points that you might want to think about. 
you don't need to use all of them in the exam. Oftentimes, though, you can put two of them together in a really, really high quality evaluation paragraph. First two points here are depends depends on. So the impact of a tariff depends on the price elasticity of demand for imports. Could be the case you put a tax on imported copper or imported concrete or whatever it is, or imported glass. But of course, the demand for those imports could well be insensitive to the price. The coefficient of price elasticity of demand could be very low, well less than one. That makes the tariff less successful in reducing the volume of imports. And the second related point, it also depends on the elasticity of supply of domestic firms. Can they take up the slack if there's a shift in demand towards their output? Third evaluation point is to question how is the tariff revenue used? Is it used to enhance social welfare? Is it used to fund increased public services? Um, is it used to fund a tax cut? Or in many developing countries where the quality of government may not be as high, does the tax revenue disappear? In other words, are tariff revenues vulnerable to high levels of, of um, corruption within, within countries? Fourth point, what might be the consequence of a tariff for income inequality? This is a particularly significant point, uh, that a tariff, particularly let's say you put a tax on food, that might have a negative effect on the real incomes of, in particular, relatively poorer households. So you could make a case for saying that a tariff could be regressive in terms of its impact. Related point, consider the likely effect on inflation and also on real living standards. So if tariffs increase prices, do wages follow suit or do people have to accept a fall in their real living standards? Wider points coming up here, consider the impact in different sectors and regions and third party countries. So a tariff won't have a uniform effect across all industries. It certainly won't have a uniform predictable effect across all regions of a country, for example, the UK. And tariffs, bilateral trade disputes between two countries can often affect third party countries. So the current trade dispute between China and the United States is clearly affecting both those two countries as well, but also the, the wider global economy. Uh, global growth is, is slowing down. Penultimate point, you could bring in some game theory into your evaluation and consider the risks of a retaliatory tit-for-tat response. You know, you put a tariff on our goods and we'll respond with a similar, perhaps even more stringent tariff. So bring some game theory in, the risks of trade wars becoming... Uh, vicious in many ways. The last point I think is hugely significant. Uh, countries don't trade with each other. Businesses trade with each other. And many exports these days require imports. A car will have imports, component parts from many different countries. And you know, although, it, let's go back to our example of the tariff on steel. Yes, that might help steel producers, but car makers need steel. Housing firms need steel. Lots of businesses need steel as an input and so there's unintended consequences which you might want to think about in other industries. So this slide hopefully will be a go-to slide if you want to take a copy of this on key valuation points on import tariffs. Lots of interesting stuff at the moment about uh, global growth being under threat in part from the trade disputes that are happening particularly China and uh, the United States. WTO, the World Trade Organization, warning just a week or so ago that trade wars threaten living standards and jobs as they cut their forecast for global growth. There are, of course, uh, arguments, counter arguments. Uh, if you're building a case for tariffs, lots of arguments you can put into play. Uh, so here are a couple of them. For example, you might justify tariffs as, a, as a, a, a valid response to dumping, where countries are selling their excess products at below cost, um, perhaps it's a policy measure in response to a huge trade deficit or you want to try and prevent structural unemployment in some key industries. Tariffs often justified on the grounds of protecting those fledgling or infant industries until they're scaled and cost competitive. For many developing countries, tariffs generate tax revenue and could help bring down a budget deficit. And protectionism, of course, is often a response to a deep recession where countries sometimes look inwards as a way of stabilizing their economic cycle. On the other hand, of course, there are lots of arguments against protectionism. Uh, crucially, I think when you're evaluating the impact of tariffs and other forms of protectionism, always consider the possible impact on different stakeholders, consumers, 
producers, the wider economy, the government, etc. So risk of retaliation and possible trade wars, market distortions, the price of products can become artificially inflated through a tariff, higher prices for consumers feeding through to inflation. We talked about the impact on low income families, the regressive effect on inequality. Oftentimes, of course, tariffs and quotas lead to an increase in illegal trade, trade in, in if you like, shadow markets that, that seeks to bypass official trade barriers. And crucially, a lot of exports require imports. If you put a tariff on imports, exporters may face higher costs as well. There we go. Uh, a quick look at some of the key evaluation arguments you might well want to use in NASA on import tariffs. And I hope you found that useful. Thanks for joining in this video.